Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on the human component of communication. I'm James Messer, and there's something you don't hear very often when working in a technical field is a human component. But at the end of the day, the section 227.01.6.2 says this is exactly the things we need to know about, which is using proper language, maintaining a positive attitude, and listening and not interrupting a customer. We'll learn about this and much more in this module. When we think about communication skills, it really does make sense. We are, after all, the human piece of this. Whenever we're trying to resolve a problem, troubleshoot an issue, these communication skills can be very valuable for us. It is, though, one of the most difficult things to master. And you might, may find yourself trying to learn more about how to communicate better throughout your entire career. This isn't something where you take a half-day course and you got it. You know everything there is to know about communicating. There really are nuances and things that you can always learn on how to commu communicate better with other people. Whenever you start becoming a good communicator, you also become more marketable. You become more powerful. You become more useful to somebody who may need those kinds of skills because those skills very often are hard to come by. And lastly, you may be a little surprised at what you're able to learn when you start improving your communication skills. The better you're able to communicate, the more information you're able to receive on the back end. Here is a really good example of what I mean by that. We are so good as technical people at interrupting. As soon as somebody says, you know, I think I have this problem with my mouse. Oh, I know what that is. I know the answer right away. I want to interrupt you and tell you the answer and tell you how smart I am about how to fix it. It is one of the most challenging problems we have as technical people that I see time and time and time again. And I go to a lot of different organizations and talk to a lot of different people. Very often, we are trying to jump in and solve the problem quickly. We want to solve the problem quickly for the end user and let them know that they can get this problem solved quickly. Sometimes we just, just would like to let people know how smart we are. But in any case, interrupting as things are going on really limit your ability to really understand the problem. We need to build a relationship with our customers. We need to let them know that if they ever need to come to us again, we'll also listen to them that time as well. When somebody starts talking about problems they're having or a situation they've run into, there's probably a key piece of information that you have to wait to get to near the end of that particular conversation until you finally are able to get the complete picture. Now, this is important, of course, when you're face to face, but when you're on the phone, this becomes especially important because over the telephone, it becomes very difficult to communicate because you don't have any visual cues. You can't see what a person's face looks like. You can't understand exactly what's going on. So the ability to be patient and wait to hear the entire problem becomes even more important in those environments. And what you'll find is this particular skill takes a lot of time to perfect. I've worked with people for years and years and years before they're finally at a point where they can properly wait, listen to the entire problem, and then be able to work with the customer a little bit better. The better you are at this particular skill, it is amazing the amount of time that you'll save later. And instead of interrupting and telling people what you think the problem is, you're able to resolve the problem the first time because you are able to get all of the information you needed. A nice combination with that skill where we're listening to exactly what the customer is telling us is the ability to also drill down on those questions that they have. Find out more about the details about what they're mentioning. Somebody says, I'm having a problem with my mouse moving properly, and it seems to happen when I'm using this program. Well, what program is that? What version of the program? How does it manifest itself? How does it look on the screen? Do you notice anything else clicking when that is happening? You can ask more questions to drill down into those. Try to get as much information as you can about those pieces by asking a question of somebody asking you a question. You don't always have to answer a question with an answer. Sometimes you want to know more about what they're doing. You also want to be able to repeat back to them what you think they've told you. So let me make sure I understand you correctly. You're using the mouse and it works fine at any other time. It only happens to do this with this particular application. And then they could tell you, well, no, as a matter of fact, it doesn't. There's other applications it doesn't work with. Or they're able to tell you, yes, you understood exactly what I said. And by repeating some of these things back, you're also able to gather a little more information. Also keep an open mind. Even if the situation is very, very obvious and you think you know the answer as soon as they start talking, 
wait just a little bit. Never make assumptions about these things. Get the complete picture, and then you'll be especially certain that what you thought from the very beginning was the actual problem, or just by waiting, you get another key piece of information that changes your mind. And having that open mind allows you to make those changes on the fly. In our industry, we are really good at putting acronyms up, three-letter acronyms, abbreviations, these big terms, the very technical, detailed terms. And they're things that we, within our scope of technical people, can communicate properly at very specifics. But when we're talking to other people who perhaps are not technical, we need to be the translator. We need to be the ones that take that technical term or the problem that they're having and put it into terms that everybody can understand. If you're having a normal conversation, first, everybody's at ease. Everybody's very comfortable. Oh, the problem is the hardware is going bad. This hard drive is failing. The memory in your system, we ran a test and it failed. It's bad. It's a bad memory. You don't have to go into the details about what particular hex value in the memory keeps coming up bad or that the memory module itself tends to be a little bit slower than what it's rated memory specifications are, just have to tell somebody we're having, we run some tests in your memory, it's bad memory. That's it. Now everybody knows what's going on. And now you can have a conversation about what should we do about it. And people who can make business decisions now about should we buy new memory right now? Should I buy a new computer right now? Should I send this out to be repaired? Should we repair it in-house? It depends on the business situation you're in. If there's a big presentation due tomorrow that may make sense to go out and buy a new laptop right now. And so that we're able to do this very, very important presentation. Or maybe we don't have that situation. Let's just order some new memory. If we fix it next week, we'll be fine. But as long as everybody knows what's at risk and what's on the table, we're able to make better business decisions. These are really the easiest problems to avoid. If you can talk in terms where everybody understands what's going on, then everybody's going to know exactly the next steps, and there's not going to be any confusion about how to solve this particular problem. Let's see if we can answer some questions now about communicating at a human level. Our first question is, what's the best response to a user who is really venting over their broken computer? They're really frustrated, and they may be letting you have it about how their computer is not working. And really, in those particular cases, is not to do anything. Just listen to what they're saying. Sometimes we're as much a therapist to them as we are a technician. And if somebody can really get their frustrations out, and you can empathize with those frustrations and tell them, oh, I, I hear you. I've had the same problem. I, this should not be happening this way. We can absolutely fix this for you. Somebody's going to have a much better relationship with you now, and you're going to be able to resolve these problems very, very easily. Be surprised how those things turn around sometimes. What's the best way to confirm a list of customer symptoms? Well, we could write them down and think about what someone's told us, or we can simply repeat them back to them. Make sure that you understand what a customer's symptoms are by telling them, here's what I think you told me, was that I think you said this problem is only happening in this particular application or at a particular time of day. Or you're saying that the mouse moves this way whenever you're having this problem. Does that sound right? And that way, everybody knows that everybody's on the right page. They're all going to be able to resolve this problem so that everybody knows exactly how things are happening. And what is one way to avoid confusion when communicating information to the customer? Well, one good way to avoid confusion is to get rid of all your acronyms, throw out all the technical jargon, and quite simply talk to somebody at a very basic level or at a level that everybody can understand. At the end of the day, you'll find that everybody understands much better and you're able to make better decisions of what to do next. Well, that covers what we needed to know about the human component of communication. We have talked about using proper language, maintaining a positive attitude, and listening to what someone's telling you and not interrupting. If you'd like to watch any of our other free A-plus videos and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.